We recently brought in a 1970 Buick GS 455 Stage 1 into the shop for body restoration and rust repair. It was pretty torn up when we got it. Uh, pretty much every panel was rotted through in several spots. Uh, there really wasn't a trunk floor at all. The quarters were destroyed. Uh, they had had a lot of previous patchwork done. A lot of panels riveted into place, screwed into place where they should have been welded. So uh, we stripped the car down. Uh, we cut out the perimeter of the quarters and we put it on our rotisserie and we sent it to the media blaster. And when we got it back, it was even worse. After we got it back in bare steel, we went ahead and epoxy primed the whole car, you know, just to get a nice protective layer on there and keep it from rusting out again. And after that, it came over into, into my part of the shop for metalwork. We put it on a body jig, which basically replicates all the datum points of the frame and keeps everything straight. The challenge is to keep the body true and square during the panel replacement process. If you can keep it on the frame, that's definitely the best way to do it. Uh, I understand that you know trunk floor and stuff like that is pretty difficult to do on the frame, but I would try to at least set it back on the frame several times just to make sure you're going in the right direction and make sure nothing's off because a millimeter in one spot can end up being an inch off in another. You know, you want to use as many of the locating points as possible. You know, such as the trunk lid or the deck filler panel or the tail pan. Also, the the door that helps too. You also want to make sure, especially with a quarter panel, that you leave enough room for the rear quarter glass because if you weld it in the wrong spot, you'll have the whole car back together, you'll go to roll up your windows, and there won't be enough room and they won't work. And basically from there, we cut out the trunk floor and replace that. And with the Buick trunk floor, the back, I don't know, foot or so is specific to Buick and the rest is basically the same as the Chevelle from there forward. So we bought a Chevelle floor, we chopped out the last 12 inches of it and made it to the existing Buick floor, which that was actually the only spot of the trunk floor that was in decent shape, so we lucked out. So after I had the trunk floor in place, uh, it was time to do the wheel tubs. We did inner and outer wheel tubs on this. Uh, the best way to do wheel tubs, especially if you're hanging a new quarter panel on it, is to test fit the quarter several times during the wheel tub installation because it's real easy to either have them too far out or too far in which will either make your quarter panel stick too far out or it won't actually ever attach to the wheel tubs if it's too much of a gap. I like to use clamps in as many places as possible. You have to move them around a lot to get them actually to fit together because from the factory they didn't fit very well together. If you look up in the wheel arch you can see how one is always lower than the other. Um, they just never really fit too well, so I like to use clamps rather than sheet metal screws because you just end up with a thousand holes in the, you know, in the mating seam. In some spots it's necessary, you can't necessarily get a clamp in every area, but yeah, clamps are the best way to go for me. These specific tubs I welded together off the car, but this was after test fitting them several times and clamping them together in the car with the new quarter panel hanging over them to make sure that they were in the right spot. Uh, once I was comfortable with where they were, I pulled the quarter back off, pulled the wheel tubs out as one unit, and then spot welded those together, stuck them back to the inner structure, and then spot welded them to the inner structure. We use a resistance spot welder uh, made by HDP. Uh, it works great. It's got a air-powered assistance on it, so you don't really even have to clamp it. It works awesome. Adam uses a variety of tools to remove the old steel. Mostly uh, spot weld drill bits. Uh, I like to use a putty knife and a hammer. You know, it cuts through the spot welds pretty easily. They make like spot weld breaker bars that also work pretty well. I drilled out all the factory spot welds to remove the existing quarter panel. And then we hung on the new quarter panel, basically just with clamps and sheet metal screws, got everything lined up. And it's a lot of clamping it in one spot, it'll move it in another direction, and you move around the quarter panel probably four or five times before everything actually fits right. And once you're comfortable with how everything fits, we just start spot welding it back into place. The quarter panel attaches in a, in a lot of different areas. Uh, it attaches in the driver door jam. It attaches to the rocker panel, and that's probably one of the only spots where we use uh, plug welds. It attaches to the inner structure on the quarter window. It attaches to the roof rail. It attaches to the roof skin, which also attaches to the inner structure there too. 
and then it attaches all the way down the back glass and through the trunk channel and the tail pan. And then you go underneath and it attaches to the trunk extensions and then to the outer wheel well. The stampings for the quarter were just slightly off the pitch of the, the rear angle of them. So when we went to put the quarter extensions on, they didn't necessarily line up with the trunk lid too well. So it just took some finessing of the trunk extension and the trunk lid itself to get them to even out a little bit. Uh, you're gonna need some basic hammer and dolly skills. Uh, you're gonna need to know how to splice open a panel in a certain area and either stretch it open or close it back together to get it to fit right in certain areas. None of these old cars ever really fit together the same way from the factory and you just never really know what you're gonna get. So you really need to be prepared for just about anything. It's all about using the other points of the car to tell how well the piece you're replacing is fitting. You know, I usually do my spot wells about every inch to two inches depending on the area of the car. I try to look at how far they spaced them from the factory and I usually try to keep about that distance but I, I like to make it a little prettier and make them a little bit more even. From the factory, it, it, sometimes it looks like the guy just kind of closed his eyes and went to town with it. So. Yeah, it's, it's all about keeping it neat looking. Really the only places I had to do any cleanup work was where I had to do plug welds. And the only plug welds that I had to do were where the quarter meets the rocker panel at the bottom. There's a brace behind the quarter panel that's in the door jam area. And you can get to most of that with the spot welder, but there's one channel that's right at the edge, you know, basically where the door skin would meet up where I had to do plug welds there, so I had to grind those down, and then against the, the roof skin. Uh, we had to plug weld there because our spot welder isn't capable of reaching around the car in that fashion. Once we were satisfied with how the quarter fit, I went in and replaced the trunk weather stripping channels that attach to the quarter side. There's also a channel that is part of the deck filler panel, and there's a channel that's part of the tail pan, and that's what forms a complete seal around the trunk lid. So. Once everything was in its proper position, then I went through and attached all of those weather strip channels to, just to make sure everything was going to seal up right. Sometimes the pieces don't necessarily do what you want them to do, and that happens in our shop as well. You know, just walk away from it for a day, take a few breaths, um, maybe call friends, see if anybody else has had this problem. I know a lot of people don't like them, but I like to go on a lot of forums, and you know, sometimes you can weed through the good and bad advice and. There's always somebody that's had the problem before you. We think this Buick GS is looking much better than when it arrived in our shop. Compared to what it came in as, it looks great now. I mean, it's you wouldn't even be able to tell it's the same car now. If you want to check out uh, pictures of this build, you can check out our forum at uh, VATVshow.com forums. You'll find detailed photos there.